Thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this very special session of BrainX Community Live, uh, February 2021. For those who are joining us for the first time, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of BrainX Community. And then we have a very special session where we'll be presenting the 2020 year in review for AI in healthcare. Uh, please keep muted uh, through the presentation. Uh, and after that, we can uh, discuss things and uh, put comments through the chat or audio, depending upon how many people we have. So I'll get started over here. Uh, it's the BrainX community with the idea of bringing everyone together uh, for machine learning in healthcare for good has been in its existence for more than two successful years. We have a 2000 members strong international community, a few of our websites and the LinkedIn groups, which is very active on Twitter too. And then uh, we connect through these monthly BrainX community live sessions, bringing in all the selected educational material and ability to, to connect and collaborate with each other right to you. Uh, that's the web page that we have. And it has a few sections connect. So every time we have these live sessions, the details of those sessions and now the YouTube video is available on this connect, including details of the speaker. As I mentioned, it's there on YouTube. So if you miss it, you can watch it over there. You can subscribe it so that you know that a new ses session has been uh, put in there for you to view. Very active LinkedIn group and the number is almost reaching 1800 members, a lot of exchange on scholarly activity, uh, also keeping you up to date about different events that are happening and the collaborative work that different members are doing. So please join us there. And the loan section, that is where we put uh, selected curated uh, articles, uh, which are peer reviewed or otherwise, uh, which we believe will help a lot of us understand what's going on uh, for, with AI in healthcare. Uh, they are linked to the source and they're categorized so that it helps you select your specialty of focus and you can learn from other specialties too. We have a data section where open source data sets, set repositories are linked. It's been growing tremendously. So that is one place where you will find all the open source data sets listed to fulfill your machine learning and in healthcare needs. Uh, COVID-19 presented a special opportunity. So the COVID-19 data sets are also available for you to develop your models. And uh, we had launched the BrainX Community Europe edition. Some of the members over there have been working on this. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, there were certain restrictions, but we are hoping to, to bring that back this year the journal section so that you can know and directly go to the, the journals which are very much focused on AI and have pu publications that are focused in these areas. And then fostering transcontinental collaboration. Here is one of the examples from, from last year. And of course, the 2020 year in review is an excellent example of this collaboration that has been fostered through BrainX community. And thanks to uh, Alok Kotari and Dr. Ashish Khanna, we have launched our new podcast series. Uh, there are two recordings already and the third one coming soon within the next 24 to 48 hours, I am hopeful. But again, bringing the best possible content right to you using the, the content delivery medium of your choice. So subscribe to that and you can listen to all the great speakers from the world uh, bringing the best possible content directly to you about AI and healthcare. So this particular session is uh, focused on the year in review for the past uh, two other years, 2018 and 2019. What we have done is to do an exhaustive review of the trends for publications uh, related to AI and healthcare. And this particular review is a definite upgrade compared to what we have presented in the past. So I hope you will enjoy this a lot, uh, exhaustive review running into 200 plus pages. But the way that we have managed this is uh, makes it easier for everyone to access what they need to access. Again, uh, it's available through our web page, uh, the brainxai.org, uh, or the DOI number is also available. And you can find the links right on our web page and will be posted on other uh, uh, other areas too. So why have we been doing this? The reason for uh, 
doing these reviews is to get an idea about what's being researched and published in the field of AI and healthcare and be able to provide uh, our group with something where it's curated, it's classified. There are now specialists who are providing editorials or abstracts to that. And that way, you know, through this review, what has been the focus last year, who's been working in different areas in this, may gives you an opportunity to connect with the authors and researchers in those areas, even learn from other specialities. So just like there is EKG, you know, there are, there's a lot of research going on in EEG, and how could those models be shared? Because essentially you are doing waveform interpretation. So how can those be shared? What can you learn from other specialities? Uh, this year, we also asked our specialist uh, reviewers to provide some, some of their top picks. And these, uh, these authors or our uh, specialist editors are from all over the world, uh, some from Australia, Europe, Middle East, uh, India, and of course, the US. This year, uh, we have also been able to provide you a year over year trend for AI and healthcare based on what we had done over the last two years. So based on 2018, 2019, we were very excited that finally we have enough data to be able to provide you with year over year trends. So what's the methodology? It's pretty simple, PubMed search based for two terms uh, for the entire year. It's for human research only and related to, to English language. And then essentially we go through all the publications that come up through that, exclude the ones that are not relevant and that's detailed in the method section, uh, and then classify them for different specialities. And then they are also verified because our specialist editors go through those and we make sure that those are verified too. Now, as you can imagine, there are many publications which might cross specialities and around 5% of those which are of high importance to different specialities are listed in multiple groups. So they belong to multiple specialty class. And I think they're important to be listed in, in a couple of those different ones and that's why they're listed. So now here is the interesting results. When you look at what have been the trends uh, year over year, uh, you can see there has been exponential growth. So when you look at total search results, that's just the raw search based on the PubMed methodology that I uh, explained earlier. And then we go through significant number of exclusions because not all the searches yield uh, significant uh, papers or sometimes they're non-human research based. Sometimes they're related to robotics, not truly related to AI or machine learning. And uh, then the ones that are total selected are the ones that are selected for further curation and for the review that we present. But you can see year over year, there has been an explosive growth in these areas. What about specialities? So you can see every single specialty has uh, had tremendous amount of research and publication. Uh, this year, we added a special category called COVID-19, as you can imagine. And there were some comments about, wow, COVID-19 has made it to a specialty. Part of the reason was because I do believe sincerely that this hopefully is a, is a temporary uh, event and hopefully won't last long. But we didn't want to make I did want to make sure that the COVID-19 does not pollute into other trends or other categories. So hopefully this is a temporary event, maybe a year or two, and then we'll see see this die down and the other specialities will continue continue with their trends. And here are the numbers. If you want to look at the different specialties and how they have grown and trended, uh, they, they are continuing to, to increase. Some of the limitations, yes, uh, you know, it would be a fair criticism to say that it's PubMed based only. It is restricted to English language, and there are a lot of other language where, languages where uh, peer-reviewed publications are uh, are uh, going on. Uh, and I'm sorry if I missed your article or your favorite article uh, in this search, but the idea is to give you a broad landscape view of what's going on for AI and healthcare. Uh, and then there are other forums such as LinkedIn, Twitter, or, or even this live forum where we can share some of these, these publications so that we enrich ourselves. So it's not an exhaustive systematic review, 
but it does provide you at a glance a significant amount of knowledge uh, which is classified, curated, and readily available for you to at least get started, and also know who's researching what in different areas. And then, as I mentioned, this year we have had increase in our special, specialist abstracts, uh, 19 specialist authors. Uh, they are in abstract format for most of them. And we also ask them to have their article of choice listed. So a lot of them have uh, mentioned article or articles of their choice so that you can see what these specials, specialists valued uh, more uh, than the others. So we'll go through so, some of these abstracts and uh, what they, they showed us. So uh, the first one is the administrative and quality improvement one. Of course, that's near and dear to my heart too because of the, the quality improvement aspect. Dr. Avnish Kare uh, did that. There were like 102 publications related to this category this year. A lot of natural language processing work uh, on EMR applications. And there are themes like wait times. How can you impact wait times uh, either in the emergency department or other areas uh, that came through in this. Uh, there were some studies that were related to falls, patient falls, how can you prevent them? So a lot of work related to EM, EMR applications utilizing natural language processing going on is this area. Uh, as I mentioned, the wait times, a special article that, that was mentioned by uh, Dr. Kare uh, was trying to apply predictive uh, analytics uh, to manage that for MRI appointments. And also, uh, how can you handle free text notes using natural language processing. And it's physiology, of course, the specialty that I belong to. Uh, the abstract was provided by Dr. Michael Burns. Uh, 38 uh, publications uh, this year, which is which has uh, been substantial increase. And it was pretty wide. So it wasn't like one particular thing that anesthesiology uh, decided to focus on. Uh, there were a wide range of issues as listed over here that uh, anesthesiology publications, uh, which were primarily in anesthesia and algesia as the journal uh, that, that were available. Uh, for cardiology, it was Dr. Avirub Guha uh, who did the review for us. Uh, 188 publications, pretty exhaustive review. Uh, as you can imagine, the ECG and the echocardiographic related studies continue to be, be the trend. Uh, the waveform analysis, the interpretation related to arrhythmias, or from the echocardiography uh, image analysis, uh, those are the kind of studies that have seen a substantial amount of growth. Uh, three of the articles that he really, really liked and uh, recommended are listed over here. So I hope you read those and, and learn from those. Uh, Dr. Tav Pritesh Sethi uh, from India looked at 322 publications and provided us with a pretty exhaustive review. I would highly encourage you to look at this review uh, related to COVID-19, which was a special category uh, this year. And he categorized these publications into the four categories that are mentioned below. The AI or machine learning applications that were built for screening, contact tracing and detection, especially if you think about early uh, in the COVID-19 phase, uh, there were a lot of applications that were that were built related to that. Many of those applications were related to image interpretation analysis uh, of chest X-ray CT scans uh, and then subsequent tracing uh, of these patients. Uh, then treatment strategies and vaccines. Uh, there were a lot of studies that have been uh, done over the last year related to drug discovery, you know, which drugs can be repurposed and how vaccines can be developed. So a lot of uh, studies related to that. And of course, COVID-19 outcomes, you know, predicting uh, the severity of illness, which has been a challenge in this disease, uh, and also predicting who's going to require ventilator, especially if you think about there was such a acute shortage of ventilators uh, throughout the world, and then who is going to make it through this disease state and uh, who can have uh, better outcomes. So those were related to COVID-19 outcomes. And then the system, systemic implications, social behaviors and policy related study, uh, some of the work that Dr. Tapritesh Sethi himself did and, and we also collaborated with him. Those uh, publications are important 
uh, in understanding uh, and applying policy, but it was good to see uh, machine learning and AI applied to that, not just for, for clinical work, but also for uh, policy guidance and beyond the hospital. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya uh, reviewed 41 publications, as you can imagine, for critical care. Uh, the key theme continues to be sepsis, uh, and in critical care, uh, it's, it's still dominated by development of prediction models. Uh, there were also quite a few studies that were related to benchmarking the different models. So that's an encouraging step to see how people are comparing models. Uh, but they're, they're a lot related to, to sepsis and uh, prediction models for, for predicting uh, morbidity or early deterioration. Dr. Frank Pepe uh, reviewed 45 publications for dermatology. Uh, still a big focus on melanoma, but it's good to see that the focus for skin lesion diagnosis is expanding beyond melanoma trying to provide differential diagnosis uh, using various image analysis techniques, as you can imagine, still a lot focused uh, through development of convolutional neural networks. Uh, but it's good to see that there are steps being taken to expand this research beyond melanoma and to think about how can you classify images for different skin lesions and help clinicians with, with uh, those diagnoses. Now this section, which is for education, is really amazing. Uh, Leanne McCoy and Amanda Naylor, who uh, both of them are, who are entering the field of uh, healthcare, uh, going to medical school, uh, they reviewed 17 publications, and uh, and I really credit them a lot uh, for encouraging a whole host of other students to think about how they can learn. Uh, uh, more about uh, AI and healthcare. And uh, they looked at these 17 publications. I really like to love their quote over there, that we are seeing concern, consorted effort towards identifying what needs to be taught and how. So it's about the content identification and the delivery. And of course, a special mention about Liam's uh, publication, which was uh, there in Nature, uh, about what the medical students need to know about artificial intelligence. So if there is a recommended read, I would highly encourage you to read that, an awesome publication and a great job done by our future doctors. Emergency medicine was presented by uh, Dr. John Lee, he reviewed 18 publications. He actually reviewed each and every publication and provide a synopsis of each and every publication uh, in this area. And majority of them are still related to prediction models, you know, who is likely to get admitted, who's likely to see, see deterioration in, in emergency medicine uh, area. So uh, 18 publications, but each publication reviewed, and I hope you'll, you'll enjoy those. We added endocrinology, thanks to uh, Dr. Johnson Thomas. Uh, he reviewed 42 publications, as you can imagine, the diabetes related prediction models for hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia still trend to predominate. Of course, that is the big disease set uh, for endocrinology. But there is encouraging, uh, it is encouraging to see that solid endocrine uh, tumor diagnosis related uh, models are being built, especially in the area of, of thyroid uh, or adrenal uh, uh, glands. So increasing the footprint beyond diabetes is, is great to see. And uh, of course, he uh, recommended the uh, glucose monitoring and prediction for prevention of uh, hypoglycemia during nocturnal events. Gastroenterology, uh, Dr. Gursimran Kocher uh, reviewed 81 publications. As you can imagine, they're also looking at uh, image analysis and interpretation uh, during endoscopy. So most of the, the publications are still focused on uh, endoscopy, but it is very encouraging to see that they are moving on to randomized control trials of some of these applications. So there were six R RCTs that he mentioned uh, in the review, 
And uh, it is great that gastroenterology is taking future steps, moving beyond just model development, but getting into randomized controlled trials. Dr. Sandeep Reddy uh, reviewed 510 publications, so he, he took on the big one and uh, provided us with, with a pretty extensive review of what I call the pot puree or, or a mix of different publications that we didn't think necessarily either belong to one specialty or were of such high importance that they, they should be available to, to everyone and everybody should, uh, should probably look at those. He picked three uh, of these publications, which were related to uh, machine learning models to predict in-hospital mortality uh, at the time of admission itself, uh, when patients are getting admitted to the hospital. Uh, the second publication is related to more of the, the technique itself for machine learning algorithms uh, and how to handle imbalanced data uh, and how to evaluate those machine learning models related to imbalanced data. And then lastly, using smartphone uh, and moving beyond the hospital based tools like x-rays or CT scans, but how can you use smartphone for diagnosis and thereby you can think about democratizing and journalizing some of the uh, AI and healthcare tools to a larger population. So some great publications related to this section. Uh, also, I would like to uh, have a special mention about Dr. Reddy's book. He published this book last year. Of course, it didn't make it to the, the publication in the peer reviewed group, but uh, it's a great book and I would encourage you to, to review that book. Neurology, again, uh, a section that uh, is new this year. Uh, Dr. Ambush Tiwari uh, helped us uh, create the abstract. Uh, 172 publications, as you can imagine, similar to, to cardiology. Uh, this field is also focused on waveform analysis uh, specifically for EEG studies and a lot related to epilepsy. So I think you can make a fair comparison while cardiology focus on, focuses on EKG interpretation or utilization of EKG waveforms wave for prediction models uh, for dysarrhythmia. Similarly, neurology is using EEG studies for, for epilepsy uh, related diagnosis or prognosis. Uh, of course, when you're looking at uh, these studies and uh, waveform data, you are going to uh, utilize neural networks, and that's where a big focus was for neurology. A uh, couple of studies that were mentioned, uh, especially by Dr. Tiwari are listed over here. Uh, also, there were quite a few different studies uh, in this area where they use neural networks uh, for image interpretation of CT scans or, or MRIs. Uh, and I think that is also included in, or some of the special ones are included in the radiology section too. Uh, oncology continues to see tremendous growth. Dr. Manmeet uh, Aluwalia reviewed this area. Uh, a lot of publications uh, predominantly related to solid tumors. What oncology's, uh, oncology related publications are focusing on is more towards personalized prediction models for either guidance uh, related to therapeutics or prognosis. So a whole host of publications that are related to, to solid tumors, also some related to the liquid tumors like CLL, uh, but a lot of focus on personalized prediction models. Ophthalmology, uh, again, a new section for us this year, Dr. Sumit Sharma uh, reviewed that section, 132 publications. Uh, there have been a lot of studies in the past related to fundus images. What was unique this year was to look at fundus images and to predict systemic uh, disorders, uh, such as hypertension or other uh, diseases. Can you diagnose other disease states or quantify uh, the severity of illness of those disease states, that is what uh, is a growing focus using fundus images, which is very encouraging and interesting because what your eye can't see, maybe uh, AI or machine learning uh, can see. And also going beyond uh, the fundus images, looking at anterior chamber disorders, uh, for example, cataracts and uh, many publications related to that. Psychiatry and behavioral science, uh, the 
uh, abstracts were provided by Jungwon Cha and Dr. Amit Anand. Uh, they reviewed 101 publications. Here also, it was related to EEG and various images like PET scans or MRIs for diagnosis of uh, psychiatric or behavioral conditions. Uh, two special mentions were related, one article related to, to schizophrenia and trying to, to subclassify schizophrenia using machine learning model. So again, newer evolving classification models, which we typically don't think of uh, similar to uh, heart failure or ARDS or other areas are being developed and being investigated uh, in many, many areas, including here uh, as listed uh, for schizophrenia. And then uh, of course, looking at various behavioral disorder aspects and uh, trying to figure out multimodal measurements of these, uh, which is very interesting aspect because the time that you add different modalities, what you might find is completely different. Dr. Srinivas Mumadi uh, reviewed 38 publications related to pulmonary section. Uh, a lot of focus continues to be on detection of pulmonary nodule and management related to that. But in developing countries, increasing uh, research and, uh, and publication focus uh, related to tuberculosis too. And we have seen that there has been an ex increase in expansion of research uh, model development and application related to tuberculosis in various different different uh, areas. A lot of algorithms have been validated and are in use these days. Uh, and not just development of these models, the, the publication that he cited uh, is related to external validation. So very encouraging to see how some of these models are getting external validation so that these can be proven uh, to be of significance and accuracy. Uh, and uh, these have proof for generalizability and scalability, scalability which has been a challenge for, for AI in healthcare. Uh, and of course, you know, image analysis uh, is the other area uh, which he has cited for tuberculosis. Radiology. So we have to acknowledge that radiology is the leader for, for, app, for research and application of AI in healthcare. 657 publications uh, that we curated, they have not just externally validated uh, their, uh, their research, but they have gone on to, to develop FDA approved algorithms. And now they're evaluating those FDA approved algorithms. So they are way ahead of many other specialities. And I think as a specialty, we have a lot to learn from them. It's also interesting to see some of the trends where you know, there are increasing number of MRI studies uh, in this year reviews compared to the CT scan studies. Uh, of course, we excluded the COVID-19 from this particular review because you can imagine there were many uh, COVID-19 related chest X-ray or CT scan studies. So we put them in the COVID-19 section, uh, but there are a significant number of MRI studies there. Radiomics, uh, as Dr. Vachon mentioned, uh, is a special trend. So radiomics is related to looking at images for diagnosis. It is similar to pathomics, where you're looking at the slide uh, for various different diagnoses. And if you uh, want to listen to a podcast that is coming up soon on BrainX Talks, uh, it will be from Dr. Anant Madhabushi, who is a world leader in radiomics, that podcast coming soon to you uh, from BrainX Talks. What is also interesting is that radiology is moving on from just in image interpretation areas for uh, diagnosis prediction. They are moving beyond just classification models of chest X-rays and CT scan, but trying to see how machine learning or AI can be applied to develop better images, how some of the processing of these images can be done better using, using uh, machine learning or AI, or how some of the text reports can be evaluated or generated using uh, machine learning or AI. So quite a few uh, uh, publications, but there are a few special mentions over here, as you can see, uh, related to CT scan uh, images. Uh, and uh, deep learning algorithms that have been applied uh, for uh, evaluation of these uh, CT scan images. 
surgery, uh, Dr. Gabe Habub uh, reviewed 141 publications, and surgery has seen an ex explosive amount of uh, research and publications this year compared to the past few years. As you can imagine, uh, a lot of focus is on prediction models, prediction for uh, which group of patients are likely to have post-operative complications, uh, including mortality. So that's the big focus for, for a lot of these uh, surgery-related publications. And uh, there are a whole host of surgeries that are there are uh, surgery group groups, I should say, that are listed in the references, uh, but we did put them in one surgery section. There are a few uh, that uh, few of the publications that are focused on uh, preoperative evaluation and predictions uh, related to how patients are going to do, and then few which guide you whether the patient needs to go to ICU or or will need uh, a different level of care. And a special mention uh, about Dr. Haboob's uh, own study about swarm intelligence, I would definitely encourage you to, to review that. And then there were quite a few other public, uh, publication areas uh, amongst the health specialities, which are listed over here. And when you look through the review, you will find that, uh, that there are a whole host of these other specialities, I would encourage you to go through those. If you have some comments or suggestions, please share those with us uh, via LinkedIn or, or directly otherwise. Uh, but we are looking to get more specialist uh, editors for these sections. Uh, if you're interested, please uh, email me and we'll definitely include you for in the future. So in summary, Despite COVID-19, this has been a very, very successful year of expanded research and publications in the area of AI and healthcare. Of course, we saw numerous publications related to COVID-19, but we also saw continued expansion in non-COVID-19 areas despite the pandemic. So I think that is very that is a very encouraging sign, and uh, hopefully that will continue, uh, and hopefully we'll continue to see improved quality of uh, research also. We are seeing guidelines that are coming out for application and interpretation of some of these models, which is again, very important uh, in this area. Uh, and we are seeing growth in all specialties, not just one or two, but in all specialties. But of course, radiology and oncology are still, still leading this space. Uh, there is an increasing trend towards externally validated studies. Uh, and my guess is in the future, especially for the high impact journals, uh, they will not just be focusing on a new novel model, but they would want to see external validation of some of these studies. So if you are thinking about your future research, think of incorporating that in your methodology because that is going to be, be much, much more sought after. Uh, and of course, as publications uh, continue to grow, I think we have a significant amount of training data now where maybe we can use AI to develop this review for the future and be able to present that to you in, in an accurate manner. Uh, I'm going to end with this slide, uh, which was from, from the Wonder Woman movie that just got released, uh, that sometimes you can see what you're learning until you come out the other side. And that was true for 2020. 2020 was, was uh, acknowledgeably a very tough year for all of us. But despite that, as I said, uh, it is a very encouraging year where a lot of research has come about. And, uh, and I'm glad that uh, you know, collaboration, transcontinental collaboration has continued and uh, is, is, uh, is progressing very well. Uh, again, some of the resource areas where you can find a lot of content for us, uh, either through our website through the very active LinkedIn group, uh, join that, uh, through our live sessions, uh, or if you miss, the YouTube channel is there, and then join us the podcast, or feel free to email me about this. Uh, I'm going to go to the chat area and look for some of the comments, and I'm going to try to see if I can answer uh, some of the questions or comments over there. Uh, I do see uh, people who have joined from all over the world. Uh, I see uh, Senthil Kumar, 345 from Chennai in India. Thank you for joining us, Central, and I hope you enjoyed this session and the, and the overview. Uh, the, the entire review 
is available on our web page uh, and you can download it. it's available for free so you can go to brainxcommunity.com or brainxai.org and you can review it right right away uh, here's a question is there research on digital intra oral scanner dentistry using ultrasound imaging with ai 3d dental morphology for crown manufacturing dentistry very interesting question so what i can tell you is that i'm not a dentist so i am not sure if i can answer that correctly if there is somebody on on this chat who can answer that i would encourage you to do that but i i would refer you to the head and neck dental section this year we did see quite a few publications that were related to dental uh, areas uh, possibly somewhere around 15 or so I would encourage you to review those and hopefully you'll find your find the answer over there if you can please email me and i'll, I'll definitely try to help you uh, another question that i see over here is what application areas are important to look at someone interested in healthcare projects with electronics and computer science background that's a great question so uh we're talking about engineers or data scientists, what should they focus on? I think that's the purpose of creating this review is to be able to provide you the length and breadth of what's going on in, in this space. As you see, there are a lot of uh, publications and a lot of research activity related to radiology. Part of the reason uh, that is so is because there are a lot of open source data sets uh, that are available uh, in uh, in relationship with radiology, for example, the chest X-ray data sets and the CT scan data sets, many of those are open access and you can uh, get working on those. And if you want to get a list of those, you can go to BrainX uh, community website. And in the data section, there is an exhaustive list and uh, direct links to those data sets. So you can review those. Uh, I would also encourage you to look at some of the specialty abstracts and see what encourages you or what excites you. Uh, it also gives you an idea about the different AI methodologies uh, that are being used. So as you can imagine, uh, a lot of image analysis uh, is based on uh, use of neural networks. So if you are interested in applying neural networks, then I would encourage you to, to look at uh, the different specialties which are uh, essentially focused on, um, on image interpretation. Whereas if you're trying to develop prediction models, then as we discussed, uh, you can look at critical care, you can look at uh, emergency medicine, uh, or even for that matter, oncology, uh, where a lot of prediction models are being built. NLP use is increasing, but uh, it, it, it's still not, uh, as much uh, as much as a, of a growth area uh, as neural nets for image analysis or otherwise, partly because the data is very, very limited in that space. Uh, Mimic 3 got upgraded to Mimic 4. Again, the link to that data set can be found on our uh, data section, uh, but still we are restricted by the availability of, of enough data uh, related to to text uh, for application of uh, natural language processing. But we are certainly seeing uh, newer application models being built, and hopefully there will be increasing amount of data too, so that better research and publications can come in that space. All right, I'm, I'm trying to look through the chat session uh, section over here. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please place those in there and I'll be happy to answer uh, any of those. So while you're here, again, I want, want to have a sp uh, special mention for two of our uh, upcoming budding doctors, uh, uh, Amanda Naylor and Liam McCoy. Uh, and I think we think about this group and this community, which is a growing community where uh, they are now the future and are very engaged and they are helping us, us grow uh, the future of, of uh, AI in healthcare. So very encouraged to see them engage this year. I uh, see another uh, question over here. Is ML 
of great use in healthcare research projects. Yes, it is. And I think through this review, you can see uh, there are a significant uh, number of publications that are related to ML. Uh, and if you are uh, trying to discriminate between machine learning and deep learning, even then it is true. Uh, yes, a lot of radiology or image-based uh, specialty research is focused using deep learning, but ML is still a significant part of, uh, of uh, research and publications uh, in, in this list. Uh, there is a comment over here uh, from uh, Dr. Mumadi. Uh, my two cents, consider partnering with clinicians in your geographical area to pick your clinical questions. Yes, that's a great comment. Uh, although COVID-19 showed us, uh, and as uh, some of the, the people on this group right now, we have broken the regional boundaries and, and world is a, a smaller place and uh, data sharing has become easier. Communication has become easier. And I think we, we can foster more collaboration and I would encourage more transcontinental growth because that might help eliminate some of the bias in the models. Uh, that might also improve the generalizability of, of the models that we are building. So I think there is a great opportunity for us to share the data across the world as has been seen and led by many of the specialities and learn from each other and create better models. Uh, I see a question over here. Can you explain if there is a difference in artificial augmented assisted intelligence? Uh, are they the same or in being used interchangeably? So I can tell you, yes, uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence, you know, based on the Dharma, Dharma con convention, you know, there was a very specific uh, idea behind artificial intelligence. Uh, but since then, people have used augmented or assisted intelligence interchangeably. Part of, part of that uh, is related to where artificial intelligence is. It is not there at a level where it is independent. Uh, so we are seeing phases, phased improvement, just like in self-driving cars. So what you're seeing are development of these different terminologies, which are either decision support terminologies like assisted or augmented. Uh, but I think that's reflected upon where we are broadly in different phases of AI application, whether it's related to healthcare or, or otherwise. So that's why the use of these different terminologies, but they are essentially within, within the same broad group, just like machine learning or deep learning, I see commonly being used uh, interchangeably along with artificial intelligence you know, artificial intelligence is the, is the larger set and then deep learning and machine learning, you see intersection of those and then natural language processing comes in. And, and that again, you can see is that intersection of, of all of these areas and different models are being built where you start off with one particular particular tool and then you apply another one. So it's not, uh, not just uh, an independent uh, model development anymore, but people are using different models, multimodal approach, which is very encouraging to see. All right, I'm happy to take any, any other questions or comments. Uh, once again, I will refer you to our website. Uh, please go there, look at our 2020 review. And uh, I hope the curated list is a starting point. It's not a thorough systemic, systematic analysis. Uh, we acknowledge that, and that's not the purpose. The purpose is to give you an idea about what's happening in this area, plus be able to provide a ref ready reference, uh, which is curated, which is classified, and comes from our specialty or thought leaders. All right, I don't see any further comments right now. Uh, all right, I do see another one. Uh, says, hi, Piyush, good evening. I'm an anesthetist and a pain physician from UK. As a clinician, where do you start to build, develop your knowledge and skills in AI? I'm a beginner. That's a great question. And thank you for, for joining us from UK. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is look at your speciality first, uh, because that is what you're familiar with and see what people are doing in that area. Uh, 
once you have done that, also look at some of the special mention articles or the articles of choice that have been picked up by the specialists for different areas, because you learn what are, are these, what are the trends related to this. And then BrainX community serves as a resource. We have a 14 step guide to help you get started. Uh, if you go to our learn section, it has a lot of review articles over there, which will help you build that knowledge base. Uh, of course, I would encourage you to, to listen to the podcast, uh, listen to some of our YouTube channels. And I think the first step is to familiarize yourself with some of the terminologies the current state of research in this area and define the opportunities for yourself. Uh, I have a question over here. Dr. Beers, is it possible for me to unmute and ask a question? Sure, please do. Um, hi, uh, uh, Dr. Beers. Uh, this is Sendil Connecting from Chennai area. Thank and, you. Thanks uh, for joining us. Yeah. So um, we and um, uh, a group of a team of engineers uh, um, were connected in LinkedIn and we have capabilities of uh, um, doing electronic projects uh, previously also in medical domain. And we are uh, seeing to uh, work on a problem uh, where we could, uh, the, um, there is a data collection point we could uh, collect using sensors, electronic sensors maybe, and then uh, process that uh, using an edge AI um, or a tiny ML, or we can go to a cloud-based, uh, um, um, like a, a cloud-based solution. And then after uh, analyzing the data there, uh, we will give the data to be presented to the user uh, in terms of a mobile uh, application or a web-based application. So this is the model that we have worked uh, and we have uh, some capabilities in this. So uh, could you point out or could you suggest what kind of projects are now interesting uh, so that we can take up and it has some market value uh, so that it could be uh, in future, if it is successful, we can uh, make it as a venture. Yeah, I think uh, the, the purpose uh, of this review is to get you an idea about uh, the entire landscape and how, how it's uh, progressing in different areas. So as I mentioned, if you look at uh, for example, uh, radiology, you know, they have gone on to, to develop FDA approved algorithms and applications that are there in that space and they're validating those, uh, the application of that and in seeing increased research. Similarly, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Dr. Gursamran uh, Singh Kocher, he presented uh, the review of gastroenterology where you can see that there are randomized control studies being done and those applications being built, which for for future uh, FDA approval, if not already currently done, so there, there are a whole host of applications uh, that are that are being built and being developed. Uh, maybe we can take this uh, this offline and uh, we can we can discuss this, or maybe we can even have a future uh, Brinex community se uh, session where we can showcase uh, some of the examples for that. But I'll be happy to to connect with you and follow up with you uh, on this this question. But thank you for bringing this up. Uh, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at uh, another question over here. Are these researchers using modality specific or common archive viewer levels? I mean, in uh, radiology related uh, AI applications. Uh, I think it's so. If I'm understanding this question correctly. There, there are a whole host of different applications uh, uh, that are being built, uh, not just uh, viewer level uh, or, uh, you know, like this, the, the common archive. I think that there are a whole host of different modalities being used uh, for development of, of uh, applications related to, to AI uh, for radiology. Rather, there was just a recent publication that we posted on LinkedIn where uh, the group uh, led by uh, by Leo Selly uh, and many of the members, uh, they looked at uh, smartphone-based images. So it, those are not chest X-rays or uh, the the some of these uh, radiology uh, data-based images, but smartphone-based images. 
and developing deep learning uh, algorithms and trying to validate those. So the modalities are, are all uh, different. Uh, they're using uh, different uh, uh, types of uh, images for, for uh, development of these deep learning models. Uh, and I think that's where the, the beauty of being able to develop generalizable models uh, comes in. And that's why radiology is way ahead of, of many other uh, specialities. All right, looks like you got the answer. But I would again encourage you to look at the, the whole host of publications that are there, pretty exhaustive. Uh, refer you to the abstract from Dr. Vachon, that also might be helpful. I'm happy to take any other questions or, or comments.